What are you reading there, Chief? Harry Potter. Which one are you on now? Six. Beauty. Ready for a road trip? Yep. Catch some dogs? You bet. Give me a good you bet. You bet. A little lot louder. Yeah. You bet! You bet! Well, I just caught anybody fish out here, apparently. Squash down. We've been working really hard on Max's you bet. It's uh, definitely a work in progress. Welcome back to another very exciting ice fishing video. I'm out here with uh, Porn Stash, who's in the hut right now with uh, the Dab Master. They're both chilling in there. We just got out here. It is freaking windy. It's cold right now. We got Porn Stash's buddy Jordan over there. We're at a spot where uh, where Porn Stash came last week, and he actually uh, he caught some really big species of fish, some that we've barely ever caught through the ice. So I am jacked about it. As you can see, we're out here. We're in the forest. It's like six or seven inch ice here, but that's like open water over there so skim ice we're, we're definitely gonna be staying away from that what do you think today oh ah! yeah you bet there's a ghost in the hut <laughs> we're getting some holes drilled we're gonna send some jaw jackers out we're gonna fish in the hut out of the hut all sorts of stuff and hopefully get max on a big old long whiskery wall wallery dog one of them put it down and then you put that over it and it holds it and your line just goes right over that so when it goes down so that's the hook. So if I'm outside yeah. and that goes off, uh -huh. you just take it out of the holder there and start reeling. All right. I have 100% confidence you'll know what to do. All right, guys, here's what I'm going with the old, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark in here. Swedish nipple with a whole minner guy. And it looks like it's 20 feet deep. Max is jaw jacking next to me because that's what he wanted. We're going to jig in this hole and then we're just going to kind of cover some water. I think we might have to move around a little bit to find them, but at least we got good weather. It's snowing a little bit right now. The wind's blowing really hard as you guys could hear a second ago. Theoretically, that would be some uh, fish biting conditions. All right, we're going searching, bro. Right. Be right out there. You holler, okay? okay? A lot like conditions out here, eh? Oh, there we go. I got a fish on me. Come get it, bud. <laughs> Look at that. That's a good one. No. That'll fill your hole. The backwards toilet guy? Yeah. You bet. Look at that. Mud on his belly. Goodbye, kitty. Oh, you got one. That's the hook. You got him for real. Max has hooked up. You go easy on him. You got really light line, okay? So just lift up when you can. Yep, and what when he wants to go, you just let him go, okay? Doesn't seem that big. I can't tell. He's actually they just fight really slow through the ice, but he felt like a lot of weight when you had him. Just go easy on him, and we, if he gets the hole and takes off, you just let him like that. Yeah, you got a big fish, dude. Good job, Max. So we'll just take our time with him, okay? Okay. Keep grinding on him. You're doing great, man. He's just down there a ways. Keep going. There you go, go easy. Oh, it's a catfish. Look at him. Look at him go, dude. Easy, easy. Just go, just reel, keep reeling slow. If he takes off down, you, you let him go. I'm gonna grab him for you. He doesn't want that hole, does he? Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah, dog. Hell yeah. Give yeah. me some. Dude, you beat me. Yeah, I did. You caught one before I did. Hell yes. Is that your first ever catfish through the ice, too? Yeah, it is. Looks, uh, looks a little... Steaming. It is steaming, because it's so warm in here. Freaking Dab Master gets the first bite of the day. Between me and you, anyways. Well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> dude, nice fish. Kind of took off when he was when he was on that light line. He was coming up slow at first, but then he was taking off, wasn't he? You're good. Yeah. These these will catch like when it goes down. See? Yeah. Good time? Yeah. All right, let's get back in the water, dude. Put, put his head down first. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Watch here, your hand is right over his spine there. You gotta be careful. There you go. Just kind of lead him towards it. Push his head down. Don't mind him, so. Goodbye, kitty. Dude. Awesome. Uh -huh. One fight? Yeah. Let's do it again. Okay, deal. Oh, 
Okay, day number two. Myself, Dad, Master have made it back out. We're at the same lake, but we're gonna fish a different part of the lake right now. They might not be able to hear anything I'm saying, Max, because the freaking sled dragging behind me. But basically, one thing we failed to mention the other day is we drove freaking two hours. This is the only place with safe ice. And I've been telling you guys, it's hard to find either safe ice or open water that's good enough to fish. This is like the closest thing to home we can get to. So we're making some long day trip and honestly the lake just didn't fish well last time we were here. We know there's big fish in here and like I said it's the only freaking safe place to go. So Dad Master and I are out for a, yeah, a refinish tour. This time without corn stash and Jordan. This time we're uh, we're changing sides of the lake. So we're on a totally different part of the lake. A lot more trees here. We got a little creek bend that kind of goes through this part of the lake. Of course you guys can see right there we still have some very very unsafe and even open water right there. So definitely gonna hit these spud bar around a whole bunch and then actually dad master and i are going to do a little bit of a challenge video probably gonna see that the next video we're pretty stoked for it very least I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna be able to get into some panfish or something we're gonna put some jaw jackers up we got some minnows this morning so we got minnows for bait feeling good about it we're gonna use old mr spud bar this time because i don't know how safe this ice is through so we probably got about three to four inches that's good enough for your little butt Oh, yours. You might be watching me swim today. Well, as you can see, there's people drilled a bunch of holes right here and it hasn't gotten any warmer. So this should be plenty safe to fish. But I also think, I don't know if you guys can see this, the channel swings around up there and then comes right down the chute here and then goes in and wraps around that way. You can see, cause there's a little void in the trees. So chan Creek Channel is always a good place. Fish like to suspend this time of year, get on the edges and stuff. And of course we're gonna go probably try over by some of the trees too. Yeah, Max, we hit hit it a couple times. See if it's safe. Jeez, Max, don't hit it so hard. It is heavy. It's heavy, so you can when you hit the ice, yeah. it goes through it with the least amount of force possible. Because ice, I don't know if you know this, it's kind of hard. All right, enough dicking around. Let's put some poles out. Well, as you can see, no, I do not have gloves on. That's a solid probably four inches, Max, so we are awesome. Wow, plus another one or two inches, so we got five or six inches like this. So when this goes off, it starts ringing. Comprende? Comprende. Beauty. Dirt in there. I'm gonna use this little purple guy. You know why I fish like purple? Why? Because of the way it is. All right, let's see if we can get one. I finally found some fish, Max. They're kind of acting like they're big, too. Got him. Got him. Let's see what we got here, Max. Ah, oh, just a little blue head. Perfect. That's what we're after. No, it's not. This guy acted way bigger than he was. See the little group of them down there by the bottom? Yeah, There's like, right like two of them. Of. I'm right in the middle of them now. Ice fishing is so weird. Fish just randomly get in the middle of these creek channels around the edges of them. They don't really relate to stuff like open water fishing. We'd go fish a point. We'd go fish a rock pile. Go fish a hump. Ice fishing. Drill some damn holes till you find fish. Here he comes. Look how fast he's coming at it. Oh, he bit. If I was a fish, I would probably not eat some random thing floating. Is that right? That's moving casually. That has like literally, what if you had a hook? and you couldn't see the hook and there was a cheeseburger in front of your face, would you eat it then? If there was a random cheeseburger in front of my face, I would not eat it. What if you you woke up this morning, uh -huh. and you're walking down the hallway, and you saw a cheeseburger on the floor? Wouldn't eat Just it. middle, but you were like hungry for breakfast. You don't get to eat very much. You don't have another option to get food. It's right there in front of you. There's no refrigerator. It's when there's stuff in front of your face, you eat it. If I could see the hook, I wouldn't eat it. And also, a hook can't go through the ceiling of my house. Okay, so if you could see the hook, you wouldn't eat it, right? Right. What if you couldn't see the hook? You just saw a cheeseburger, and you're hungry. I would swim over top of it, above the line. I mean, over top of it, and swim everywhere above it mm -hmm. to see if there's any line. But what if your brain was the size of a pea? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is a thing. Maybe we need to drop a minnow in his face. Yeah. There we go. Got it. Got one. What do we got? What do we got? This feels different. This feels different. Look what we got, dude. A baby, a baby catfish. <laughs> That's funny. I was not expecting that. That is definitely 
what bit earlier too. It's like must have a lot of catfish in it, Max. Kind of a cool little guy. What'd you think about those catfish we ate the other day? Uh, they were good. I asked you the yeah, other day. They were, they were good. I know that they were good, but I'm just saying. I asked you the other day what you thought your best seafood you've ever had in your life was. And Max says, meh, those catfish we had the other day were really good. I was like, really? The catfish we I had? I <laughs> switched it to sushi. You switched it to sushi. Okay. I can get down with that. Apparently it's sushi now. But he did say the catfish we had the other day were some of his best seafood he's ever eaten. So, I'm pretty happy with that. We could have kept that one we caught the other day, which, you know, started this video. Dab Master was bowed up on. That would have been a good eater size. At that point, though, I didn't know if there was a lot of catfish in here. I don't want to keep a bunch. There are no. Oh, there's a fish on it. It doesn't feel big. Something just set off the jaw jacker. The rod wasn't even bending. Oh, God. That's a tanker gill. Dude, look how big that one is. <laughs> That's another one of those hybrids. He freaking gobbled it. Deal. Well, it wasn't the jaw jacker fish we're after, but that son of a bitch is, uh, he's big. This should be no surprise to you guys because it's what I used to, like 90% of the time, I think, ice fishing last year. But here's my little, my little bait that I'm using today. Just a little tiny purple teardrop guy with a little upwards bent hook, which is super, super sharp. So I don't miss, I don't know, I probably missed a ton of bites, it looks like. You don't always connect ice fishing with these little baby hooks. Put a little wax from on there. I like to pull the end of them off. Gummy worm boy and I call that splooging the worm because it leaves a nice little splooge trail coming out the back. I think it gives it just a little bit more wiggle. I don't know if you can see that. There's just shit falling off everywhere in the water. The old splooge the worm method. Drop it down. It's 13 feet, 14 feet right here. These catfish just keep cruising in about a foot to two feet off the bottom. And they're kind of finicky, but you wiggle in their face long enough, they will come up and suck it in eventually. And it's not even really a, a thump or a tick or anything. I'm just like jiggling it up and down and all of a sudden when, when I jiggle down, my line's slack because it's in his mouth. Oh, dude, another one. God, I don't know if they're not eating it all the way or what, but that was another freaking, that had to have been a catfish or a walleye or something. He freaking bowed my rod. Found the cat hole again, Max, I think. He's coming for it. Come get it. There we go. Got another one, Max. Max got another one. Another freaking fighter. That's not a blue head. <laughs> Another catfish. Jesus, this is the weirdest damn. Another catfish, dude. This is the weirdest lake in North America. I don't know. I know porn stash does, but not that many people just freaking hammer catfish through the ice. Or really target them for that much. That matcher, but hell yeah. That's fun. You could actually eat something that small, but we ain't eating them today. Let that guy go. Hey, quit playing with your dinghy. Another fish, got him, got him. This doesn't feel like a catfish or it's a small one. What do we got? Hey, it's a blue gal. Goodbye, Mr. Bluehead. All right, so what are we up to, Max? Three catfish and two bluegill? No, we are in Nebraska. Usually it's 937 bluegill to one catfish, so I'll take it. What do you think? Pretty boring video? Pretty terrible? Or was it good? Huh? Okay, as you guys can see, back home, back in Nebraska, that's why I did some ice fishing, um, but I went from Texas, came home to Nebraska, had Max for the weekend, and so we're like, you know, he has a couple days left off on his winter break, we decided we'd go out and spend some time in the outdoors, do some ice fishing, and even though it wasn't very productive, we had a good time doing it, he caught his biggest catfish ever in this video, so shout out to you, Max, another video with him coming tomorrow, actually, so be checking for that one, we did a fun little challenge video, he had a good time, and it ended up being a success, um, we're in a weird spot, Spot in the country though right now um i was just talking to porn stash about this the other day we we like literally are it seems like the only ones in the country that can't do any fishing if you're in this strange band that's probably stretching across the country but for the last like month and a half we've had either skim ice that's not safe to fish or no ice um, but the water is like under 40 degrees so the fish are just about impossible to catch a lot of it's muddy water too super cold muddy water not a fun thing it's like everyone north of us can go ice fishing everyone south of us can go and have some decent open water fishing especially if they're close to power plant lakes and stuff like that fortunately unfortunately have a giant storm system coming in and it's going to bring some very very cold weather with it so that means two things one um when we get that in the next couple days we're going to be back out doing some more ice fishing um in this area we're finally gonna have some safe ice but unfortunately it means it's probably going to be like i don't know below 10 degrees every time i'm doing some ice fishing too so 
take the good with the bad. It's kind of the life of this whole YouTube fishing type deal. But um, yeah, it's been an interesting couple weeks. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I kind of shared some of my sentiments, getting freaking death threats from from 12 year olds and shit. It's been freaking crazy and out of hand. Uh, if you guys want some more insight, I'm actually in a couple hours here. I'm about to go on Luke Duncan's um, podcast. So go check out Luke's podcast. I'll link it down below. I'm not sure if that will be posted yet. I think he posts podcasts on Sundays, uh, two a week, I believe. So maybe Sunday and Wednesday. I'm not sure when it plans to go up. But um, I'm going to be on his podcast. We're going to be talking all different types of stuff that's been going on, kind of telling my story in this fishing YouTube journey, as well as some of the controversial stuff that's gone down the last couple weeks um, and kind of the future of everything that uh, I'm going to be doing and what goes into being a professional YouTube fisherman. But thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I will link everything down below, including Josh and Jordan's channels. I'll catch you guys very soon on the ice, open water. Who knows? We'll be fishing, though. See you guys.